All right, guys. I'm still reading this description because I'm kind of blown away by this. This is a Mercedes-Benz uh, promotional kind of vehicle they did in, in line with Avatar. And they said they created it with the theme of, like, the Avatar kind of theme. This is a real car. I don't know if the car is called Vision AVTR. I'm not quite sure. It's like a 13-minute presentation. I legit thought this was all CGI. Um, no, it's not BMW. It's Mercedes. Um, cool. Let's check it out. This is insane. This is insane. I mean, wow. What is going on here? First off. Okay, first off. <laughs> nobody's going to be driving. Is Felix. Nobody's going to be driving this car around anywhere. I almost feel like that would be like a ridiculous thing to do. Look at look at this car. Like it, as cool as it like initially looks. What are these fins on the back, by the way? I'm not... What do these things do? I'm really curious. <laughs> this isn't anything you're going to be driving around on the on the regular. You know what I mean? That's some Tron stuff, right? This is some Tron type thing. I don't know how this car would be generally perceived to the world if I were to drive this thing around. You know? Like, if I were just driving around a town with this car... The, now, listen to me. You give me the opportunity to, sure... Like, you know, hey, great. Hey, DG, check out this vision. We're going to give it to you for a couple days to drive around. Fine. God only knows how much this thing would cost, you know? But it's not like a mass-produced vehicle, you know? It's just like some custom-built kind of thing that they decided to do. By the way, is the new Avatar coming out? Because I cannot wait for that. Anyway, let's, let's, get, let's, get, let's get into this. Let's get back into this. Craziness. I like the backlight, though. I do like the backlight, but that's ridiculous. This is like a fucking circus came to town. <laughs> My name is Felix. I'm a Danish TV host and car fanatic. I've been invited here to California to drive the new Vision <laughs> Right in effigy. It's right in there in the hangar, and you're invited it breathes. to come along. This car future. actually breathes through gills. Oh, wow. Okay, wait. That, that was pretty... That's pretty tight. It's just so weird looking, dude. What what are those things? Somebody help me! What the fuck are those? Are scary on the back? The 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 eyeball. Yeah, right. Totally feel it. What the fuck? This must Did be you the see that? Unit. I have a thousand questions now. So maybe it's time to bring in the designers. Well, I'm here with uh, Gordon Wagner. Did they Chief change color? Design at or did they change the correct? model? I swear officer. it was black. That was almost correct. <laughs> Chief design officer. Hey. But the most important thing is that, Gordon, this <laughs> car Cash. is something you authorized. What's the vision behind this car? What's it supposed to be? Okay. We wanted to create a vehicle what? that is not alien to its environment. That's no, no, no. This is very alien to its environment. Like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. This is the most alien thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm still trying to find out if I like it or not. I'm so undecided about the design of this. It's so different. Like, I'm not even quite sure that those are wheels made of rubber. Like, is, <laughs> like those wheels do not even look natural. Like, this is insane. Plus, look how far that comes down to the ground. You're not going to be going over any hills or anything with that anytime soon, you know? But the, the doors on the side, the doors on the side are ridiculous, man. They're just like these polycarb, clear polycarb doors that, like, that's kind of cool. But what the fuck is on the back of these things? What are, what are those things on the back? It's almost a part of the ecosystem of the environment. And um, we actually didn't want to create a vehicle. It should be almost something like a living organism. Mm -hmm. I think you succeeded in that because it doesn't really <laughs> feel like a car anymore. Except no, it has not. four wheels. Actually, it can crap sideways. Really? Yeah. What? Why? 30 degrees sideways. Because what? we didn't want to have conventional wheels. These wheels, they look more like an animal paw, like soft and uh, you know, gentle. When you look at... 
The wheels are like an animal paw. Look at that. Look at the striations in the wheel behind the chat, guys. Look at the wheel itself. It's like got many different striations and folds in it. That's ridiculous. Come on, man. The thing went like to the side. <laughs> what? Parallel parking. Say goodbye to it. You don't need to worry about parallel parking in this car. You just basically go sideways. <laughs> you strafe. You strafe into your spot. Look at this car. What is it that you see as a designer? First of all, I think it looks very futuristic thanks to that um, super futuristic proportion. We wanted to create something that is very efficient looking, something that is uh, almost like bio design in harmony with nature. So it goes very gentle through the wind. From the materials, there's a lot of recycled materials. Yeah, right. um, we have the dynamic car, which is fully recycled. We have this uh, Karoon wood, which is um, fast growing rattan. Are very sustainable. We have all these fabrics, this ocean waste plastic. Look at that interior. Uh, so from the material side, yeah, this is. Okay, okay, okay. What is the squishy pad right there with the LEDs? Like, what is that? Where that? Where normally you'd see like some type of stick shift there. There's literally like some. Somebody explain me the giant LED squishy pad in the middle. What do you do to that? What is going on in this car, man? I'm not quite sure. I like that it like divides the two seats, though. Like, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it switches to airplane mode. <laughs> That's the tire pop. <laughs> this is completely um, sustainable. And of course, our vision is the 100% sustainable car. And that car should embody this. <laughs> Should we sit inside? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. You want to go on the yeah, other yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, sure. So the first moment is that wake up moment uh, when you start. Man, these guys are really in it. Like, oh, yes, I like the cup holders. What do you do with the cup holders? Well, you not only put cups in it, Sven, you also can put your unit in it. My unit? What do you mean, my unit? You know what I mean, Sven. You know what I mean. Wait a second. Not only can I put my cup of hot chocolate in this cup holder, but I can put also my unit. Yes, Sven, you can put in your unit. Oh my God. <laughs> Enter the car and the car wakes up. So um, you see all these light strips, they, they come alive. And then uh, you start that merge moment and you connect right. with this um, merge device here. And of course you can steer the car forward backward oh That's jesus the right. it's the steering wheel sideways you tilt that so the okay i'm like for the people that left this stream and didn't get to realize that that was the steering wheel i feel bad for those people there was like three people who left from my bad german kind of european eastern accent and and you know as bad as that was which personally i thought was pretty good and very funny. So those three people, you can leave. You can leave this stream. You are not welcome here. If you don't understand how to have a, a sense of humor, then you can go. But you also missed out. <laughs> you also missed out on the fact that the giant LED squishy pad is, in fact, a steering wheel. There's a sensor in there as well. Yeah. And actually, if you see it, it goes up and down like the car is breathing. <laughs> and then it boots up and you see the screen. And now we are actually flying through the world of Pandora. And this is so cool about this project as um, we are stepping even out of the car industry and going to a jammy? different industry or merging with a different industry. In this case, um, <laughs> entertainment, one of the biggest entertainment companies. And for me, I see Mercedes not really as a car brand, I see it as a leading luxury brand. In fact, we want to make it the most loved luxury brand. <laughs> we like our, oh shit, I just spilled my coffee every. We also like our vehicles to give out most sexual satisfaction. <laughs> every vehicle. Now I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm in Russian mode, sorry. Projects like that. It's a weird day. Corporations from other fields bring us so much more inspiration that we can elevate what we do to a different level. Can we drive? Let's go and drive. Let's take it out for a spin. And you haven't driven it before. It's no. your first time as well. <laughs> well let's, let's move it slightly forward, okay? okay? We are rolling. 
insane. Yeah, but steering. It's the steering and the throttle. It's the steering and the throttle. This looks ridiculous. Can I just say that though? <laughs> like two grown ass men in this in this alien vehicle, and he's got his hand on the squishy LED pad that is both the steering wheel and the <laughs> the throttle. And it looks it's what a concept, by the way, though, that you have a steering wheel and a throttle. And this is how you're driving around. That is that's actually quite innovative. But the the aesthetics looking at this the, the, like looking at this looks ridiculous. Steering <laughs> wheels are so last year. The nipple of a car. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, what are the things on the back? So we can try I cutting must know a little bit. Whoa. That is so cool. That is so, so cool. The cool thing is the co-driver can take over. So Oh of it. course. Ah, oh, it's just your turn, Sven. <laughs> Do you like the nipple rubbing? <laughs> Tell me you like the z nipple oh. rubbing, Sven. Yeah. Oh, oh I love the cool. nipple the nipple wheel. <laughs> okay, what are the sexual so, fins on Vera, back? You were the <laughs> head designer, lead designer on the user experience of the car, right? Yes, correct. I'm the director of advanced user experience design. <laughs> exactly. That's you. So when I saw it, at, you know, the first time I saw it and I went over to it and I had this feeling that it was trying to communicate <laughs> with me, you know, with the flaps and the lights and all. So that was... Your with the flaps and the lights and all, I thought to myself, this will give me great orgasm. Your department. Correct. So everything what you see and hear. Can I touch the nipples? So when I get into my 2020 Mercedes, there's a lot of linguatronic. You can talk with the car. Yes. This one you don't <laughs> talk with it. No, here you we interact don't talk with it. Yes, it's it's. Yeah, imagine once you talk with a car, it's more issue and command. You know, we want to reduce this uh, idea and say, hey. This uh, element is more like a skin of ourselves, like a digital membrane of ourselves, which uh, um, influences us and can, can provide us an amplify experience to our outside world. We have a more dialogue-based system, and um, of course, machine learning already can do a lot of things. Yeah, she's like, she's like, shh, you don't need to talk. Shh, <laughs> you don't need to talk at all. Just shh, 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 shh. We don't need that. You don't need to talk. No, 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 no. Talking. Mm. <laughs> but uh, we are trying to really that this living organism is starting approaching the human and not we as a human are approaching the machine, which is very different. <laughs> Should we go inside? Yes, let's do it. Who you put us in the this? Discord? Thank which you. Way? I don't care. This is amazing. Both fine. We can steer the car from both sides. True. I'll take the other one. <laughs> Keep going So what do we see? We see no steering wheel, we see no buttons, yeah. <laughs> we see no touch screen, no paddles. No. But in the middle you guys console, are cracking me up. we see a device, oh, oh, we call it oh, oh, <laughs> And what we see, it's pulsating. And what oh. we want to connect with the machine, we put down our hand. What happens in my seat? You, I'm dying. you feel the vibration in the seat of the exciters. You feel the heartbeat, <laughs> it's my heartbeat now. And now we are connected to the system. So normally, you as a human, you approach the car. So you steer the steering wheel, you touch the screen, you issue a command. But uh, we did it very differently in the Vision AVTR. Mm -hmm. In the Vision AVTR, you lift your hand and icons are projected <gasps> onto your skin. I'm not what? touching the display anymore or pushing a button. No. But what I do is I raise my hand. You can do the same thing on your side. And then I move left. And okay, okay. What is going on here, man? This is like a sensual, <laughs> sensual experience. Did you ever want to feel rubbed down when you drive? Welcome to Vat Welcome to Vatch Car. <laughs>
left and right, and you see that icons are projected onto my skin, into yes. my palm. What? So all your senses are triggered, not only the visual one, but also the haptic one and the acoustic one. And then let's go to Pandora. Yeah. Shall I close it? Yeah. And then we select the Benji maybe. Mm -hmm. And you see how this gets pinkish. And now you look through the eyes of this Benji, you feel the heartbeat and you see what the Benji would see. In this sense, this experience that the car is really starting approaching you with the interface is very new and unique and it hasn't been done before. Yeah, and then, you know, at the same time, make it look as luxury as this is. This is Are the those cameras on the back? I think you see how the... Okay, 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 wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> the orbital strike cannon? Then we select the orbital strike cannon. Those things on the back were cameras. Those cameras are putting visual imagery into the dash of the car? Is that what was happening there? Yeah. The extra, the extra design. <laughs> Ronald, the Ronald's like, listen, I don't like my cars to feel my nipples. I like gasoline. I like V8s. And a lot of noise in my cars, motherfuckers. <laughs> no, I don't want no car rubbing my nipples. <laughs> Ronald, he's, I like my American classic muscle motherfuckers. Don't you start rubbing my nipples. <laughs> then he'll come together as a one cool art piece almost. When you as a department think of stuff like this, then of course everything you think of isn't possible. So you have to have a meeting with somebody in a technical department <laughs> that actually tells you whether this is possible or not. Our engineers are very, uh, very creative people, very knowledgeable, and only as a collaborative team, designers and the engineers, we can come up with these really functional prototypes. And it's very important. It's functional. It's, mm -hmm. it's not faked. It's really working. I don't quite understand all of it, but you did a good job. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Who does? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Do any of us I'm understand here with this? Alex Dang. He's a designer at Mercedes-Benz, and he's actually the one who drew the lines for the Vision AVTR. Hi, Alex. Hi. So, can you start by telling us how does a vision like this begins? It was an internal competition where everyone can show their vision how they see the car could look like, and um, right from the beginning, we were all sitting together and watching the movie basically in the cinema. And uh, while watching the movie, I did some scribbles and was thinking about how can I implement some shapes from the movie into the car. And then you actually won the competition? Yes, it was a long uh, process. Internally, it's a competition, but uh, in the end, it's like a team effort because you get some ideas and the other one gets some ideas and the designs keep getting better. Mm -hmm. So how long time did it take from you put the first line on a drawing until the design was ready? Um, it was like two years, I would say. Was it uh, difficult for you? Sometimes it comes natural and then sometimes it's a struggle. But you have to deal with it and uh, trust the process in a way. Because in the end, there will be something cool coming out. If, it's, if you feel too comfortable, then you're too much in your comfort zone, I would say. And uh, creativity is, I think, about getting out of the comfort zone, which doesn't always feel nice, but then you can create know, can something we, new. Can we concentrate on the fins? Push, push to the limits, exactly. Mm. So you came up with the idea for the wheels? Yes, because I The wheels are very innovative. And I saw the wood sprites. Really? And I thought... Like, like, though, like, really? God only knows how much they cost. So let's, let's keep in mind this is Mercedes-Benz, right? But like the wheel technology, the wheel technology and the LED nipple are very innovative technologies. Seriously, all, all humor aside, like those two technologies are very innovative, very innovative. Why not trying to implement those into our vision? What's, uh, what was the biggest challenge for you on the design of this car? I think the biggest challenge for me was to combine the best of both worlds, like this science fiction avatar world, into our reality and still make it recognizable as a Mercedes-Benz. 
Let's move to the back. Yeah. Because yes. these uh, these flaps that makes the car come alive. What's the story with these? We have 33 flaps, and the main functions are aerodynamics, communication, and also the expression. Because the aerodynamics, the main idea to change a lot of surfaces to change the aerodynamics in a way that you want to have it or you need it. Mm -hmm. And the second is expression, um, the right, Cash. aspect. You're sitting in the car, driving it. Um, you can show the first time. You can show your intentions to the outside, whether you're accelerating, yeah. you're braking, or you turn. Yeah. So everything will be manifested to the outside through the omnidirectional flaps. And the third is. Because it's an artificial intelligence, it's like a living object. It also has emotions that can be expressed to the outside through the no. motion design. What? What do you think it drives like? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Those fins sh have no purpose. You can't, you can't speak to me like that. You can't speak to me like that, Alex. That essentially, he said these fins are bullshit. <laughs> no, he said he said they're expression. It's expression. It's art. It's art. See, I thought there were like cameras inside picking up like what's going on behind you. Put some cameras in that motherfucker. Put some cameras in the back. G let me know what's going on and present it to me. See, I got a. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking art and utility. You understand, Alex? You guys need somebody like a thinker like me, Mercedes Benz, that can do this for you. This this whole expressionism bullshit. Come on. Like, it doesn't act like some amazing three-dimensional spoiler that makes your car faster. No, come on. There's way too many of those things to even be effective. It, it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't have cameras in it. Communication, it has feelings. A car has feelings? Now I'm getting scared. Alex. Alex, what did you do? You totally put bullshit on the back of this car, Alex. God damn it. God damn it, Alex. You should have told me there was some utility to it. Now you turned me off to the entire the, the entire experience. I'm done. That's it. I'm done with this video. Alex, with your expressionist bullshit on the back of this car, you completely you had me with the tires and the LED nipple. You had me with the tires and the LED nipple. I was on board. But then we got to the fins on back and I realized that this is just some type of artistic expressionist bullshit and not very well done because there's no utilitarian uh, uh, element to it. Put some utilitarian element into your into your expressionism, Alex. Evolve, Alex. God damn it, I gotta teach people everything.